Good evening. Thank you all very much. Welcome this evening to CPS NZ. Um, hopefully you're in the right place. And uh, just a couple of little admin things to start with. And that is, it is very much appreciated if you could turn your phones to silent. And it would also be a good idea that if the sirens go and we have to evacuate, please do so through the emergency exits. Thank you all very much that way. Welcome this and evening. The front and the assembly CPS area is NZ. across the road. Um, hopefully you're in the right place. If you are looking and for a bathroom, uh, just uh, a couple of follow out that way admin to the right. To start with. And it's in that, and that area is that way. Is very much appreciated if and you could turn your phones to silent. I think I've done the admin so and making sure that we're all going to be safe. A good if idea that wrong. if the sirens um, go and we have to evacuate, please do so through the emergency It's going to be a great, great evening this Thank evening. We have the natural history open at uh, number two and the assembly to be area is by across Roger the road. Waits. Um, hopefully you're in the right and place. John you is looking going for to introduce bathroom, uh, and uh, Roger. A couple of follow out that we way. Have the lovely right. Nicola, who is it's reading that for us, area it that way. Is critiques. Very <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> Thank if you. you could turn your phones um, to silent. I think I've done the admin. So basically, I think that sure is that a good idea. That wrong. Our evening. The sirens um, go. And then we'll have some afterwards. We will have some notices. And we're going to be talking about next week. And we have the natural history. Open Welcome to the number two. The 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 I'll bring John up to introduce um, the judge, the right and place. we will John be on our way to introduce uh, Roger. Uh, Roger. Uh, follow out that way. The lovely Nicola, who is reading that for us, that way. Critics. Very much appreciated. If you could turn your phones to silent. Evening, everybody. I think I've done the admin. So basically, I think that is a good idea. Just tonight, and then we'll have some afterwards. We will have some notices. Roger's got an APS in Z. So he's given us a bit of a bio, uh, which I'll read, and he's also given us a, um, an understanding of how he uh, views images, and Nicola will read that before she reads the uh, Roger's uh, been a passionate, he's been passionate about nature uh, from a very young age, and being brought up in the Marlborough Sounds gave him all sorts of opportunities to learn all about nature. Native flora, insects and fishing were part of his uh, daily routine. And with the mother and the grandmother, who were heavily into childhood, he learned all the native flora names just by repeating what they said. Uh, Roger started dabbling uh, in Roger's photography uh, uh, being around about 1982 with an underwater camera. It's an unusual place to start photography. Uh, it was a self-taught uh, job and the photos were, by his words, atrocious were for a while. Uh, Eventually though he became uh, he learned and he put a few in some of the international competitions repeating, winning a few gongs uh, here uh, and Roger there. Roger started dabbling uh, in photography. Uh, photography on land though began in around about 1993 with an underwater camera. Uh, he had to learn a whole new way of doing things. Uh, it was a self-taught And once again, uh, the photos job. were lousy. And the photos but he were soon learnt, uh, uh, words, atrocious uh, were soon got the hang of things. He joined the local camera club, he learned the way to do it, and began to get into competition. The upshot gong was, and he resisted to put photography on land, though he began to short about 1993. There were more gongs. He had to learn a new way of doing things. He judged and once again, the photos were lousy. And the photos but he were soon in doing uh, those words, atrocious uh, words, very bad things. things. Uh, Eventually joined the local camera club, the way to do it, and, and, and began doing that to, uh, to this very moment in time. The upshot gong was, and he was just to put uh, the uh, photography on land, the long story short, there were more gongs. He had to learn a new way of doing his things, he judged and once again, the photos were lousy, but he soon learned those words, atrocious words, to his very Yep, come down. Um, can I have a bit of light first, please, Andrew? So I'm doing that uh, to this very moment in time. Oh, a little bit more, please. 
species it is. It is normally a requirement of this competition to state the scientific or common name of the subject, remembering that there are many species of duck. Cushion plants forming type map. There looks to be a mission of three or four different elements. I'm merely naming the one that's dash tape. Does not tell me what. Could I suggest that you look for composition that is normally the requirement of this competition to state the sign balance to your image? Black-billed gull. Doing what these gulls do best, squawking. Good detail of the head, but then not much else is in focus because of the very narrow depth of field. An interesting pose with a show of aggression. Mountain ducks in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving away from the camera, it wasn't the best angle for showing or identifying them. Gull. There are a number of different Doing species of mountain ducks, and I did find what they good are detail through of the, the use of these scientific names in would have been helpful. Of very narrow interesting depth of field. colour, an interesting pose with a show of aggression. Quaternarius sp. The form of this mountain ducks is in well a line. Shown. 
I, I felt that, that with the ducks moving away from the camera, the it wasn't the best the angle for showing or identifying them. If you there can, are a number of different species of these gull ducks, and I did find what they good detail through the use of these scientific names would have been helpful interesting stretching an interesting pose with a show of aggression. Quaternarius SP. The form Read of the mountain ducks is in a line. I felt, felt that with the ducks moving away from the camera, the it wasn't the, the best angle for showing or identifying them. But if there are a number of different species of these gull ducks, and I did find what they had good detail through the use of these scientific names, would have been helpful in stretching an interesting pose with a show of aggression. Quaternarius. SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the, the ducks moving away from the camera, the it wasn't the best the angle for showing or identifying them. But if there are a number of different species of these gull ducks, and I did find what they had good detail through the use of these scientific names, it would have been helpful as an interesting stretching an interesting pose with a show of aggression. But you can get an idea of Quaternarius the SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt, I felt that with the ducks moving away from the camera, the it wasn't the best the angle for showing or identifying them. But if there are a number of different species of these gull ducks, and I did find what they had good detail through the use of these scientific names, it would have been helpful as an interesting stretching out an interesting pose with a show of aggression. But you can get an idea of Quaternarius SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving away from the camera, it wasn't the best angle for showing or identifying them. But if there are a number of different species of these gull ducks, and I did find what they had good detail through the use of these scientific names, it would have been helpful as an interesting stretching out an interesting pose with a show of aggression. Using but you can get an idea of Quaternarius SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving away from the camera, the form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving away from the camera, but I felt that it could do us some more interaction between the birds to give us the SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving but I felt that it could do us some more interaction between the birds to give us the SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving but I felt that it could do us some more interaction between the birds to give us the SP. The form of mountain ducks is in a line. I felt that with the ducks moving but I felt that it could do us some more interaction between the birds to give us the SP. The form of mountain ducks. I'll try this one. Oh, it's not doing it. A sharp and colourful example of the pied shag, a very relaxed and sleepy looking bird. The outer focus bird at the left rear tends to be more of a distraction than a usual useful element of the picture and would not take much effort to crop this out, an otherwise interesting nature shot. Oh, it's working. Turkey vulture, Cathartis aura. From this image, it's a bird which looks to be a hunter and eater of carrion, judging by the vicious looking hooked beak. It is a fairly static looking picture, so it doesn't display any interesting traits apart from having a head like a turkey. It is sharp and well posed against an out of focus background. Australian brush turkey, Electura lathame. First impression, I thought what an ugly looking critter. The detail is really interesting, but I felt it was slightly unsharp throughout, which is a pity. However, the colour is strong and the eye is sharp with good catch light. Rival, Nati Pari. The view from the front on makes the view from front on makes this bird look a bit pigeon-toed, but there is no mistaking the shape of the rye bull. Interesting shot with the bird making its way among the shells. It's very distinctive. The Australia Australian coot family. A good composition of chick with parent birds, but I felt that it wasn't sharp. 
Maybe this has been taken with a long focal length lens. It looks to have a very narrow depth of field, which might explain why the bird on the right looks a bit of a soft focus wise. Water movement might have, have something to do with it also. Who knows? Juvenile bell bird, Coromaco. Colour and definition are good, but the light and dark shades in the background tend to be a bit of a distraction. I always say, with nature images, background is everything. I'm aware that you maybe could not do a lot about the background, but it's up to the photographer to be aware and to overcome the obstacle. Wind blow and tide, Kaikoura, score three. The action of the crashing waves is well caught, with the environment shown via the landform in the background, an interesting nature action image showing the powerful forces of the ocean. Well done. White-faced heron dropping its catch. The action of the drop is caught at the vital moment and adds the all-important interest factor to this image. The picture tells a very good nature story. Wild red deer stag roaring. The action of the stag roaring is well caught. I like the pose and the composition within the frame. The environment is such that it gives the impression of the stag being immersed in the surrounding wilderness. Well done. Gannet coming into nest. An interesting view of a gannet bringing nesting material to the nest site. Good detail of the action, although the front on view doesn't show any of the bird's facial expressions, but there is no doubt about the story the picture tells, and the nesting like environment the of these and birds, the composition the within the frame. Wings of the bird the environment is such is that it gives feature. the impression of the stag being immersed in the surrounding wilderness. Well done. New Zealand endemic marble leaf showing seed locals. Gannet coming into great nest. great to see a species of An interesting view of a gannet bringing nesting material to the nest site. What I call Good detail of the action, although is the front on view doesn't show the any of the bird's facial and expressions. It is a good example of but there is the no doubt about the story the picture tells. The correct title and the nesting like environment the of these and the composition the within the frame. Wings of the, bird the environment is such that it gives the impression of the stag being immersed in the surrounding wilderness. Well An done. Interesting New Zealand endemic with tongue-like feet showing feet seed to grip onto branches. Gannet coming into nest. Great to see a species of An interesting view of a gannet bringing nesting material to the nest site. Good, good detail of the action, although it's not front on view doesn't show any of the bird's facial and expressions. It is a good example of but there is no doubt about the story the picture tells. And the nest like the pose and the composition within the frame. The environment is such that it gives the impression of the stag being immersed in the surrounding wilderness. A nice well done. Interesting New Zealand endemic with marble leaf, leaf the feet showing the seed to be on to Gannet coming into nest. Great to see a species of An interesting view of a gannet bringing nesting material to the nest site. Good, good detail of the action, although it's not front on view doesn't show with any of the bird's facial and it is a good example. But there is no doubt about the story the picture tells. And the nest like the pose and the composition within the stretch wings of the bird. The environment is such that it gives the impression of the stag being immersed in the surrounding world. A nice well done. Interesting New picture. Zealand endemic with marble leaf like the feet showing the seed to the look onto branches. Gannet branch. coming into nest. Great to see a species of An interesting view of a gannet bringing nesting material to the nest site. Good, good detail of the action, although it's not front on view doesn't show any of the bird's facial expressions. Example, but there is no doubt about the story the picture tells. And the nest like the pose and the composition within the frame. Wings of the bird. The environment is such that it gives the impression of the stag being immersed in the surrounding. Well done. Nice well done. An interesting New Zealand endemic with marble leaf like the feet the showing the seed to look onto branches. Gannet coming into nest. Great to see a species of An interesting view of the gannet bringing nesting material to the nest site. Good detail of the action, although it's not front on view doesn't show any of the bird's facial expressions. Example, but there is no doubt about the species that it lives in when your picture. Sharp focus with good pose of the check. African Elephant Botswana. A leathery coarse exterior of the elephant skin stands out well in the shot, with the eye hiding behind the hairy eyelashes. A very good composition and close-up shot. An interesting close-up pose, well done.
Cicatoidea, cicada, it's weird, one of them. I like this very sharp, close-up view of the cicada. Even though its body is partially hidden by a flower petal, it's a very sharp and captures the gorgeous colours and patterns of this insect. An interesting close-up. Nesta notabilis. Good use of the scientific name. The underside of the Kia's wings have superb colour, as is shown here. I like it that you have managed to keep the bird in pin-sharp focus, even though it is probably moving. I probably think, at a guess, that you have cloned out a few bits in this picture, particularly between the neck and the beak, the telltale smudges. Anyway, only you will really know this. Juvenile raptor, an interesting pose, with the head cocked to one side, but the steely intensive gaze of the eyes are always looking for possible prey. A very sharp portrait with good colour against the outer focus background, a very intense but typical picture of the native falcon. Score four. Tremila mesenterica. This jelly fungi is nicely composed within the frame and it's a good example of the species. It shows the environment in which it grows, a very good nature shot. Score four, bellbird coromaco. A lovely capture of the bellbird with its feathers fluffed out while in full song. Beautifully sharp with good color and sharp focus. A lovely nature shot with typical pose of the bellbird. Monarch butterfly, Danius plexippus. The butterfly is well placed and posed within the frame. An unusual point of interest is the proboscis stuck inside the flower bloom. Well done to capture this. Mostly the butterfly is sharp with a display of its beautiful patterns and colouring a worthy four points. Little Black Shag. A beautiful portrait of the little black shag drying off. Good detail of the bird with its environment well displaced. The bird itself stands out well against the background. A very good nature image. Ruffed Lemur. A great little portrait of the lemur with a very sharp view of the eyes and the face. I don't know whether this little animal is in the wild or in captivity, but you have done well to get this shot. As to my knowledge, they are quite a shy, nervous little animal. Good composition within the frame. Group of Kias. When I first saw this image, I thought that these guys were discussing how to take someone's car apart in a car park. A very good group shot of the Kias and in their natural alpine environment. They are very cheeky species of bird and you can see from this image that they are up to mischief of some kind. This is a picture that tells a story. Nine banded armadillo. A very unusual and unique creature. Excellent detail, right down to the fine hairs around the back legs. I was fascinated by the group of flies riding on its back. An interesting nature portrait. A fairy helmet, Mycena haematopus. An excellent example of this fungus showing cap, shank and gills very clearly with just very minimal amount of the environment showing at the bottom right. This little bit of light reflected onto the gills helps display gill detail. It's well positioned within the frame. Very good work. Score five. White-faced heron. A beautiful example of the heron in flight. It's sharp, colorful, and has excellent detail of the plumage. A very good pose of this bird in flight. Well caught and composed nature shot.
occupied shag gathering material to build a nest. An excellent nature shot of the pied shag in flight with nesting material. It has good colour and is in sharp focus, well seen and good camera skills. It's all about being able to see ahead of what's about to happen. Anticipation and you have done this in spades. Variable oyster catcher feeding juvenile. This a nature image which tells a strong story about the adult bird feeding its chick. It's in sharp focus and you can see from the action that the chick is more interested in what the adult bird is offering. The action is caught at precisely the right moment. Great shot. <laughs> Score six. Chinese mantis, Tenadora sinensis. The action and pose of the mantis is superb. It is in pin sharp focus and has very good detail of all the folding components of the wings. I thought that maybe this is an attempt to mesmerise its prey. An excellent nature image. Great work. Thank you, Nicola. I think tonight we had uh, about 60% of the images were in acceptance. And the first one goes to Neil Grenfell for the windblown tide at Kaikoura. And the next one is a white faced here and dropping its catch by Janine Money. Then we have the wild uh, red deer stag roaring, by, uh, Peter Curtis, who's not here tonight. And we have the gannet coming into nest by Ron Willems, who's also not here tonight. There's a few of these. New Zealand endemic marble leaf, and I won't try and read the rest, showing its seeds, by Joe Curtis, not here tonight. Panther Chameleon uh, in Madagascar by Karen Dance. I'm going to struggle with this one. Lysidius Agronominum by Henshin Kim. Is Henshin here? No. Then we have the female Dolomides Minor by Francesca Davies. And here we have a coot chick by Bonnie Steskamp. The African Elephant in Botswana by Karen McConchy. And the next one is Cicada Odiema uh, by Denise Fuller. And here we have the Nesta Notabilis by Dawn Kirk. We have the Juvenile Raptor by Sue Newport. How do you say that? 
Tremella Mesenterica. Thank you, Diana. By John Thornton. <laughs> the Bellbird, Coromico by Kay Miller. <laughs> and the Monarch Butterfly by Alan Moore. Then we have The Little Black Shag by Jan Bogue. <laughs> Next we have The Rufford Lima by Anne Yuan. And then we have The Group of Cares by Catherine Affield. <laughs> and The Nine Banded Armadillo by Ian Harrison. <laughs> Ooh, that's high acceptance. <laughs> Then we have The Fairy ha ha Helmet by John Benn. <laughs> now we move on to the honours. First one is The White Faced Heron by Trish Brown. <laughs> then we have The Pied Shag Gathering Material to Build a Nest by Liz Amon. The Variable Oyster Catcher Feeding Its Juvenile by Carolyn Alcock. <laughs> and the lucky last, the honours and best in show, is the Chinese Mantis by J.K. Q. <laughs> who's away at the moment film, uh, photographing more of these wonderful creatures. Thank you very much. What a wonderful collection of photos. And that is beautiful, but kind of scary too. <laughs> the detail's amazing. So I have a couple of notices uh, this evening. Could the people who are going on the fungi trip this weekend please meet in the seat at the back afterwards with Diana and Janine. I've just got a few details to iron out with you all and the other thing to know is that the Laurie Thomas is closing on the 21st of May so if you want to enter please do so. Uh, has anyone got any other notices they would like to bring to the club? Okay so our other um, upcoming com competitions is the uh, projected image number five, photojournalism due in tonight, in case anyone had forgotten and going to madly dash home to put it in. We have the open print number three due at the end of May. We have the MDC, which is travel due at the end of May as well. Uh, there's a couple of international, um, sorry, not international, some national um, saloons that are open. We have the North Shore Open, um, North Shore Saloon, um, and that opened on the 1st of June, and that has um, several competitions in it. Please go to the, their website to have a look. But there's an open monochrome colour, a minimalistic architecture, decisive moment, scapes open nature and people, so quite a variety you could enter into there. The Tauranga Audio Visual Saloon closes on the 7th of June, so if you want to enter that, that would be quite fun. 
and the Greymouth um, Photography Club is putting on a national saloon which closes at the end of May and that is open colour, open monochrome, nature, creative and portraits. Um, so um, if you don't know those clubs, you can find them at the PSNZ website under um, the events or competitions that you could enter into. Okay, next week we have Ellen Moore is presenting in the tutorial the digital asset management and photo backups. Thank you, Ellen. And at eight o'clock we have the projected image number four. And that's my entire list of notices of competitions and things. I'd like to say a big thank you for this evening to John. Thank you for supper. F to Nelson, thank you very much for your tutorial. Thank you to Gordon and Wayne on sound, Alistair and Alan on projection. Thank you, John, for, pre for presenting the... Natural History Open and the judge, Roger, and thank you very much, Nicola, for reading. One and all, have a lovely evening, and we'll catch you next next time. That was a pretty short meeting. <laughs>